another day, another episode of Tool School, and another saw. I'm Emily Pilliton from Girls Garage, and today we are going to learn how to use a coping saw. Speaking of coping, how are you coping? We want to just acknowledge that as we're shooting and sharing these videos, there's a lot going on in the world. We're all dealing with the COVID-19 crisis, and a lot of us are at home. Hopefully most of us are, are at home. And there's also a lot of uncertainty and fear. And I don't know about you, but I also feel like I don't have a whole lot of control over my life or the future. And so one of the things I love most about building is that it gives me a sense of productivity, of hope, makes me feel like I have some control and agency in my life. So some of the skills that we're practicing, just even doing these activities at home, or even if you're just watching me do them from afar, it does make us feel creative and productive and like we're solving problems. And these are all really great things to be feeling right now. So we are sending you our love. We hope that you and your whole families are doing well and staying safe. So speaking of safety, since we're still in the wood shop, as we learned yesterday with the chop saw, there's a lot of things that we need to double check so that we can keep our bodies safe as we're building. Anytime we're using tools, we need to do this check. So let's do that. I have my hair tied back in a braid or a bun. I have safety glasses. I don't have any kind of dangly jewelry like earrings or a necklace or um, hoodie strings. I just take my hoodie strings out. I have my sleeves pushed up or rolled up if you can. I'm not wearing anything that's loose or baggy. And then I'm wearing closed toed shoes and long pants. So I'm good to go. I've put on my official uniform for building. Let's do this. Okay, so we talked about a chop saw, but I wanted to make sure we look at some hand saws because it's much more common for people to have hand saws in their house. So there's lots of different kinds. You might have something that looks like this. This is a pretty traditional standard hand saw. Sometimes it's also called a cross cut hand saw. And this is a great tool for like if branches fall down in your backyard or you need to cut them kind of crudely. It's a really useful saw. But I want something a little bit more precise for this wooden box that we're building. Another kind of hand saw is called a back saw. It's called a back saw because it has this reinforced back, almost like a spine. It's great for making nice, smooth, straight cuts. And it's often used with something called a miter box. This fixture will help me, if I were to set a piece of wood in here, I can use these slots and my back saw to make cuts like that, or I could pick an angle. This is a 45 degree angle, so maybe I need to align it here. I can make cuts like that. So this is also really useful. I prefer a coping saw though, because it has such a tiny blade, it gives me a lot of control over the precision of my cut. So that's what we're gonna to use today. This is also a really inexpensive saw. If you don't have one, it's pretty easy to acquire. And it has replaceable blades. So unlike my back saw, if I break a blade or one gets dull, I can just throw another one in there really easily. So this is a great saw to have. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the coping saw. Let's look at some of the parts. Okay, so here's my coping saw. My coping saw has a handle that is made out of rubber. You might have one that has a wooden handle. And then it has this C-shaped frame. That's a helpful way to remember what this thing is called. C is for coping. And then I have my blade, which is right here. It's very skinny. And I'll show you this in a minute, but the blade is locked into place because it has these little pins and those pins fit into these slots that are inside these arms in the end of the frame. So we have the handle, the frame, these arms with a slot and then the blade. Now I'm looking at this blade and it's a little old and a little grimy, so I would like to replace this blade. And as, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. Um, the way that I like to replace a blade is I am gonna set it upright and I'm gonna use my body weight to compress the frame just enough so that I can slide the blade out. So it'll look like this. I'm gonna just push down lightly and then I should be able to just pop the pins out of one side and then out of the other. Okay, and then my new blade, let's come in and take a look at the parts of this blade. Here's my tiny coping saw blade. So here are the pins I was describing. 
there's these little pins. Those are the pins, they're like arms, and those are what fit into the little slots. And then my teeth, if you look at the direction of the teeth of this blade, they're pointing this way. So another way to look at that is if you look at the blade this way, the teeth are pointing downward, kind of like a Christmas tree. If you think about how you draw a Christmas tree, right? That's gonna be important when we put the blade in. Okay, so now let's go back to installing our new blade. I'm gonna set up my frame in the same way. This time as I compress it, I'm gonna hook my bottom pins in first, compress, and then get my top pins in. I'm also gonna make sure, we just looked at the direction of those teeth, I want my teeth pointing towards the handle. So I'm gonna compress my frame, get my bottom pins in, and then I'm pushing until I can get my top pins in. Okay, and there, it snapped into place. And as I let go, that frame popped back into tension and now it's holding my blade nice and tight. And see what I meant about the direction of the blade and the, the teeth. I want these teeth pointing downward towards my handle, okay? So I have a fresh blade. I'm ready to make my cut with my coping saw. So let me grab my wood and some plants. So here's our one by six from the other day. And I have two clamps. These are very, very important because before I make any cuts, I need to secure this board to a table. Can you even imagine how hard it would be to try to hold this in place and cut at the same time? That does not sound effective or safe. So, I like these quick release clamps. There are lots of kinds of clamps, but this is a good one because you can actually operate it with one hand if you need to. So there's two handles on this clamp. There's a little one and a big one. When I squeeze the little handle, I can move this freely. And then when I squeeze the big one, it tightens. So I am going to set up my board with my cut line hanging off the edge. And I'm gonna take my clamp, I'm gonna squeeze the little one, and open it up, and just sort of loosely fit it around my wood and the table. Now I'm gonna squeeze the big one five times. Four, five. That's pretty good. I want to use two though because if I only use one clamp, I can still pivot this. So I'm going to take my second clamp, put it on the other side. Little handle, open it up, and then big handle to tighten. One, two, three, four, five. All right, now I'm nice and secure. One extra squeeze for good luck. Okay? All right, so when we make cuts with our coping saw, I'm gonna just tell you a couple helpful things then I'll actually make this cut. All right, so thing one that we need to remember. When I set up to make my cut, I am going to make sure that I'm accounting for my kerf. Remember our vocab word from yesterday? The kerf is the thickness of our saw blade. The chop saw kerf was an eighth of an inch. That's significant. Even though this is a very tiny blade, it still has a kerf. It's, I'm gonna guess it's about a 32nd of an inch. So, you know, that's tiny. It doesn't really matter, but this is a good principle to always remember when I'm making any cut. So I am gonna make an effort to put the thickness of my tiny blade on the X side of my line, okay? The second thing is that a coping saw and a lot of tools, you're gonna think you need to put like so much muscle into it and like really go at it, but actually, if you're using a tool properly, you shouldn't have to be forcing it. The tool should be doing the work for you. So once I start cutting, I wanna just try to get into a nice rhythm and I'm not gonna be using too much muscle. I'm letting the saw do the work for me. The third thing is that coping saws work best at a 45 degree angle. This is not very effective, nor is perfectly upright. Okay, so 45 degrees, right in the middle. Great. And then the last thing just to know about a coping saw is that because of the way we oriented our teeth, my saw is only making a cut on the pull stroke, meaning when I'm pulling the saw back towards me, that's when it's doing its cutting, okay? So to get started for my cut, I'm gonna just score the board, which means I'm gonna make a little starting slot. So I'm gonna line up my blade 
and just make one quick little score like this. Okay, that's just to get me started. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut through this whole board. It's probably gonna take me 30, 45 seconds. I might start sweating or panting, but we're gonna get through it, okay? So here we go. I am going to set up for this cut. I already have my score mark to start. Deep breath. Here we go. and I wasn't using a lot of muscle, but woo, that is an aerobic workout. Okay, so I used my coping saw, I made my cut. As you can see, it's not quite as buttery smooth as our chop saw, but that's a pretty good straight cut. And then if I don't like some of this furry splintery edge, I can just take a piece of sandpaper or a sanding sponge or a block and clean that right up. So, ah, uh, we love the coping saw. So that's how you use a coping saw. Um, another quick reminder that remember how yesterday we talked about how you can't measure out all your pieces and cut them all at the same time? Let's still not do that. That's a good practice to be in. So what am I gonna do after I make my first cut? I'm gonna go back, measure my next one, and cut it. And then measure my next one and cut it until I've cut all my pieces. Okay, so great job with the coping saw. Tomorrow, we're gonna learn how to use a jigsaw which is another kind of power saw. We're gonna make an extra special cut on the top of our box piece. Great job, see you next time. Thanks for being here.